Young women have been growing up with an indoctrination of what womanhood is and what it should be. They've been taught everything that is in direct opposition to the Word of God. Young women who want to be different from the world are rare, but they are real. On this Rare But Real podcast, Audrey Brogy will often be joined by her daughter, Grace Anna, and her daughters-in-law, Maureen, Kesset, and Marilyn, who desire to be discerning in a day when everything seems to go against God's design. Join them in the journey of becoming rare but real. It takes courage and conviction. And now, Audrey Brogy. Hey there. I am so glad that you're listening to this podcast today. And um, what we're going to do on this new series, actually, I'm going to call it Read Your Bible. And for those of you who might have watched or live streamed or been at our uh, recent women's event, that is what it was called, Read Your Bible. And um, I had my daughter there. She was our speaker, and she shared a lot of great things that were very encouraging to help us uh, as we take on the task of reading our Bibles, and it made me think um, when, when we were gearing up for this particular event um, how this would make a great series, and I wanted to talk to each of my girls about how they actually read their own Bibles. Obviously, the, the normal thing is, oh, we pick up our Bibles and we read it, but there were a lot of things that came to my mind, um, and I shared it with them. In fact, this is what I told them I wanted to do. I said, uh, at, uh, let's see, I want to do a podcast with each of you using the topic that we're doing for our women's event. And I want to call it Read Your Bible, how you read, study the word on your own, what you do with your children and how you encourage them. Maybe family Bible times with dad or whatever it is that you have found helpful, what your struggles are with having that time and what you found to be the greatest help or helps. Um, I want to talk to you about how the dynamic has changed with different seasons in your life, the different stages of your lives from your single days to your married days to your married with little children days and even now as they are growing and can understand so much more. And I know for me, me as I think back over the years of having my family and even prior to that when I was a single college student and having um, time with the Lord on my own, it did change for me. So many different things changed as I was learning how to incorporate continuing on studying the Bible when I started having a growing family. And there's so many things I could share with that and I might at some point, maybe at the wrap up of, of uh, at the end of doing the series with my girls, but but I actually want to hear from them, especially because they are right now in the throes of it. And so today, for the first uh, uh, episode in this series, I have my daughter, Grace Anna. She's joining me um, by phone. And since she was just here this past weekend and she shared so many things with our women, I know it'll be fresh uh, on her mind. And so um, I'm going to stop talking and let her start talking. Hey, Grace Anna. Hey, Mom, you know, when I was thinking about the event that we had on Friday night at CBC, I was thinking about how awesome it was that on a Friday night, Labor Day weekend, a room of women were packed to hear an event called Read Your Bible. No, Nothing like fancy, <laughs> no, but just Read Your Bible. That's and right. It's just a reminder to me that Christian women, I think, are hungry for the Word of God. We want mm -hmm. to know it. We want to read it. And so I'm excited about this series because I know I'm excited to hear Cassie and Maureen talk about what they do with their time in the Word. Mm -hmm. And so I do hope that this you know, is an encouragement. Um, you know, and I want to say something. It, what you just said reminded me, too, how our event, we weren't sure how many women to expect. And this is a time women were registering early on, which is unusual for um, CBC women. They usually wait till the last minute. But they were registering early on, and it was such a, a kick in the pants or a, just an encouragement to, to me and to Claudia, who helps me so much in women's ministry, to see, wow, you're right, women were so eager to be a part of this. And not only that, but in terms of all the registrants, we had 50 just walk-ins who had not registered ahead of time. And so we were prepared for all of that, but it really was a, a, a testament to what you just said, women being... Um, you know, just want to know about reading their Bibles. It wasn't like, oh, we're doing something cool or we're having like some, you know, chocolate event. It was just about the Bible. 
Yes, and we are having, I, I feel like this is Bible week for me <laughs> because we're having a Women in the Word event at our church on Saturday for our women, very similar to what we did at, at your church. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to a woman yesterday and she said, And she's uh, like 40 weeks pregnant. And she said, I just want my son to hold off so I can come to the Women in the Word event (laughs) Saturday. (laughs) But I think that's just such an encouraging thing. And I think that, you know, women are hungry just to get back to the Word of God. We For years, I I feel like there's been such an emphasis on... Um, you know, marketed Bible studies and, mm-hmm. and those definitely have their place. But some, I think some of them hungry. do. <laughs> some of them do, correct. Yeah, some right. of them do. Um, but I think, yeah, women are hungry to just get into the Word of God. And obviously, I, I shared a lot on Friday night, so I don't want to just repeat everything. But for me, I think getting into the Word and being consistent with reading through the entire Bible Mm -hmm. has been so transformational for me and an exciting place just in my Christian walk and journey. And um, one of the huge things just in a practical sense, since we're talking a lot about the practical side of it for me in my season of life is, and, and I have children who are older, but I still have children who are younger. And so I don't, I'm not out of this, season of life yet where I'm not interrupted and I'm not, um, right. You know, where my time is my own, Sure. you know, not that any of our time is, is truly our own, but I'm still very much in that season. Right. Um, and so listening to the word of God has been one of my favorite ways to be in the word. And what I normally do is get up in the morning and sit make my coffee or Grant makes it and I sit in the corner of our kitchen and I turn on my audio Bible and I like to follow along in my Bible. I love to date where I am in my Mm -hmm, Bible mm -hmm. and I love to follow along and listen. And the thing that I like about listening while I'm following along is that it keeps me going and it keeps me moving because sometimes if I'm, you know, just reading on my own, I'll really stop and want to, unpack something which is definitely oh, mm-hmm. good that's not a negative thing at all but I only have a limited amount of time and so I want to keep moving through the word and so that's been huge for me in terms of maximizing my time I can even speed up the reader a little bit if I need to or <laughs> slow him down oh, um, that, I need to remember that <laughs> yeah, yeah so that has just been absolutely um just so great in terms of moving through chunks of scripture. And in fact, Grant has recently started doing the same thing. Mm. And he just said, wow, now I understand like why you've been able to read through the Bible because (laughs) it keeps you moving through the word of God. So um, that's been a huge thing for me. And then I think it has also helped me on the days when everything goes wrong. You know, I sleep in, or um, I am interrupted, or it's a busy morning, I can still uh, listen to the Word while I'm making breakfast or Mm -hmm. while I have to jump and do those chores. And I don't get, you know, it's not always the way I want it to be, but I can still be fed and nourished on the Word. And there's something, you know, that the Lord, the Holy Spirit always ministers to me, even through that. You know, and I, I love what you're saying, because even as you're doing that and your children see that, see, oh, what are you listening to? If you have your, you know, AirPods in or whatever, or, you know, if it's just playing, then they hear it and they know that that is what you're doing rather than children coming down and saying, oh, mommy's watching the morning talk show on television or whatever. I mean, not that they're thinking about that, but they just, they see what we're doing and it becomes another thing that's positive for our children as they are growing up, even if we think sometimes, oh, my time with the Lord is interrupted but what is it interrupted with our children they're seeing what we're doing yeah and a lot of times when they come down depending on where I am or you know sometimes they need to eat breakfast right away so I'll just stop what I'm doing and doing that but sometimes if they have their breakfast fixed I'll just switch at that point to even just reading aloud to them yeah say hey come over here I'm about to start this next chapter I want you to come here and I want you to listen and so it's just a way and I Every time I do that, 
I always get something really enriching out of the word myself. Mm-hmm. And I shared this the other night, but I was reading Psalm 146, 147, 148 last week. And Charles, and I think it was Audrey Tate came in. I said, hey, I'm going to read this aloud to y'all. And so I started reading Psalm 147 aloud, which I had just read to myself. And the truths that we read when I read them aloud, they really hit my heart in a different way. Yeah. And we were able to talk about that, you know, how God makes the the grass to grow on the mountains. And and what does that mean Mm -hmm. that, you know, and it was just a great time of really kind of digging deeper into the word with them. You know, let me let me interrupt for a second since you mentioned the Friday night event and we've mentioned it, you know, a couple times already on this podcast, but if any of you are curious about that or you want to listen to it or watch it, um there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is um you know, I have a, a Facebook page called Mothering from the Heart. You can just type that in, Mothering from the Heart, Facebook page, you know, on Facebook, and it's posted there, um, the message from Friday night. So you get to hear my daughter speak, and you'll get to watch the Q&A and learn about the actual, what she's talking about when we're um, listening to the Word of God and the Bible reading challenge that we introduced Friday night. Or you can go to communitybiblechurch.us. That's all one, you know, it's all together, Community Bible Church. Dot us and then in the search bar you can just type in read your bible and when you when you do the search bar it will come up and there'll be the, the very top the link that pops up the first link that pops up click on that and it takes you right to the friday night event and you'll be very encouraged as you listen to the things that she shared and um and and you know it, it'll give you a lot of um Inside and you know one of the things, Grace Anna, after you shared and we talked a little bit when I introduced you about, you know, the Bible reading plan. Then you know we had a time for Q and A and you know, people wrote down their questions. And it's like the first half of the questions were all, tell me about how to do this. And of course, we covered that in the Q&A section. So even as you're listening to her, you may be thinking the same thing. Well, I want to do this or what app is this? And but that question will be answered when you watch, get to the Q&A portion. So I just wanted to say that so women know, oh, this is where I can watch this. And I will ask Rick to put the link in the show notes as well. So go ahead. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up just about the plan because really for me, the past four years now, I've been reading the Bible on my own in the Mm -hmm. sense of I'm doing it at home, but I have had, whether it's one woman, two women, 20 women, 50 women, even a hundred women this summer reading along with me. Mm -hmm. And that has been so encouraging for me because I think so often you know, we are thinking, of course, we want to be in the word because we need nourishment, you know, we need to grow, which we absolutely do. I mean, that is essential. And we, we need to actually be needy and dependent on the Lord in that in that sense. But I also think sometimes, you know, we can think only of that, we can think only of, okay, you know, who can I find a, a good friend of mine to help me be accountable, you know, and we think about that but I think what so has been so helpful for me is just really putting into practice that you know Titus 2 model of of younger women helping the older sorry older women <laughs> well, the younger women help the older women too just in a yes, different way <laughs> yes but realizing that the word of God can mm-hmm. be just this massive tool for for you know reaching your hands beside you and behind you and encouraging Mm -hmm. new women, younger women in their faith. Um, And so it becomes, I think when you start to do that, when you start to not just think about yourself, but think about those around you, Mm -hmm. then your own growth even begins to skyrocket even more. It's like, that's not even your goal, but that's the result. Yeah, it just happens. And you know, Grace Anna, even though you were like saying, oh, felt like you were saying, oh yeah, the young woman helping the older woman. But I do want to say something about that too, because as an older woman, it is so encouraging to me to see you, to see Maureen, to see Kessid, to see Marilyn, and and now my newest daughter-in-law, 
get serious about learning. I need to say her name, Diana, my newest daughter-in-law, Diana, um, being serious about the Word of God in your lives. That's encouraging to me. And either, even young women who are in my church, or even like, you know, I have all these teenagers who are a part of our woman's life ministry. They're serious about the Lord and His Word. So that is a wonderful encouragement to me as an older woman to see the generation coming up behind me that they are holding fast the faithful Word. And I pray that they will stay strong until they get to be my age and beyond, you know, that, that there won't be any of this falling away. So, so I just want to say yeah. that you're a yeah. tremendous encouragement to me. Well, and you've always, I mean, mom, you've always taught that, you know, in terms of, of to be, you know, encouraging the women who are coming up behind you. You've always said like, I'm thinking about like the next generation and, and all of that. And I think that's so important for us as Christian women to not just be thinking, you know, how can I not just be thinking, how can I grow, which we absolutely should be thinking that, Mm -hmm. but how can, what does, how does God want to use me, you know, in the lives, obviously first and foremost of my children, but then, um, in the women, in, in the women he's placed in my life and, you know, stepping out of our comfort zone and inviting Mm -hmm. women, um, to grow spiritually with us. Yeah. And so for me, that's been really exciting to see. And it's been um, great. Be- I mean, it's just been really neat because the relationships that we formed haven't been united around, um, oh, our kids are all the same age or, mm-hmm. oh, we homeschool or, or, or this or that, but it's around the truth. That's right. Yeah. Um, and that's just a really exciting thing to see. Yeah, and I love that, you know, again, just a plug about that, that how we're, you know, because this is like I, I did this Bible reading plan with you and your women over the summer. But one of the reasons I had you come <clears throat> and speak to our women is to, to introduce it to them and start it in our church. And I can't tell you how encouraging it is. This is what, the third day, how encouraging it's been. Now we're like up to 120, I think, of our women who are participating in it. That's yeah, awesome. and I thought about, too, this morning, you know, I was teaching at Woman's Life, and I'm doing Psalm 1, and as I was listening to my Bible reading this morning, at the end of Psalm 1, I'm in the section about, you know, how the ungodly will not stand in the judgment, and so I have a little teaching part in there about the judgment, and then, and it hit me when I was listening to to John 5 this morning, because in that reading was about the two resurrections, mm-hmm. and I thought, once again, it's like, you know, um, and it says here, do not marvel, uh, let's see, I've, I've lost my place, do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come forth those who did the good deeds to resurrection of life, and of course he's talking about saved people, and those who committed the evil deeds to the resurrection of judgment, and he's talking about unsaved people. And I just, I don't know, it just hit me again. All of, all of it was wonderful this morning with Genesis and everything, but I was, that hit me too because I'd just been deep in talking about the coming judgment. And it, it, and it points to the fact that when you hear the word every single day, God, you see the whole tapestry, the weaving of the, is truth upon truth. It's scripture interpreting scripture. It's like, oh yeah, I knew this from this verse, but now I see it here as well. So anyway, that's just another plug for... I love that word tapestry that you use because I think that is, I think one of the things that is so important is that we are reading through our Bible quick enough Mm-hmm. That we can we can begin to see that tapestry because I that's just what I've personally noticed you know when, as I've been reading through the word enough where I'm moving through it in a year mm-hmm. is beginning to see those themes and things like that because you know you are it let's say you're reading four to six chapters a day you're you might think, okay, I'm not going slow enough to pick this apart. Mm -hmm. But you actually, when you're reading like that, you're beginning to see things in the scripture that you would never see if you went went too slow because you begin to see themes and 
prophecies fulfilled and all this exciting stuff. And then, like you said, like today when you're teaching, you're making all of these connections, you know, to scripture and to the word. So that's Mm -hmm. been just as we're talking about, like, what are the things that have helped me? That's been really helpful for me to begin to see themes throughout scripture and, and to see the big tapestry. But then at the same time, it's still been so helpful and important for me to, to memorize scripture mm-hmm. and to take pieces and just meditate on them and really think about them. Mm-hmm. And I love that we can do both. Mm. You know, and it, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just like you see repeated themes. And I, you know, I've read like, I, um, I'll be teaching Psalm 8 next week. And when I was listening to Psalms, when we were towards the end of the Psalm in the summer readings, and we were in Psalm 144 and hearing two, it's like a repeated thing in verse three, Oh Lord, what is man that you take knowledge mm-hmm. of him or the son of man that you think of him. And I think that's all oh, that's just like Psalm eight. And it's just in a different context. So even that, that's all I'm saying is even that what you just said, there are things that you would not see otherwise. It just depends, you know, obviously lots of times when we're studying the Bible, we're reading this and, and we have our concordance or we have our cross references and we do that and we go back and forth. So there's been other times that has been made alive to me, but that comes with that when you're pen and paper at your desk studying, but then the fact that it can you can be meditating on God's Word as you go about other things because you're listening to it. It's just an added dimension that we have now, which is just a, a great thing. So let's turn a corner and because I want to hear like, um, I mean, we've talked about reading, studying the word on your own. You may want to say a little bit more about that. But I also want you to talk a little bit about how, what you do with your children and how you encourage them, because I've seen your kids, the ones who are old enough to do it, take notes and have their own personal quiet times and underline things in their Bible. They didn't learn that on their own. Someone taught them. And I know that y'all also have family Bible time with with dad. And I mean, not your dad their dad (laughs) although when they're at our house we do that too but I want you to talk about some of those things and how that's changed over the years and what it's even like now because you have a three-year-old up to an 11 year old and how that you know anything you want to share how you make the word come alive with your family and with the changing dynamic yeah so we Grant and I both love to as often as we can just pull the kids into our lap or have them sit down next to us and read to them, you know, from a children's Bible. So the action Bible is a, is a huge mm-hmm. favorite, especially for the boys. And so a lot of times it's, it's not like a scheduled thing. I mean, mm-hmm. Monday I got up and I was doing stuff and I heard Grant, you know, in the front room, he had stopped whatever he was doing and he was just reading to Patrick from the action Bible and, and talking to him about, you know, what it means to be Christian and to walk with the Lord and, you know, Patrick's three and Patrick was just sitting in there listening. And so that's just one thing that we try to do is just take advantage of just moments that just happen and just, you know, Hey, come sit next to me. Mm-hmm. Um, let's read for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. And now with the girls, you know, they are old enough to have time with the Lord on their own. So I will, you, you know, first thing in the morning now, a lot of times, you know, the boys aren't on the same schedule as they are. So I'll just say, hey, I want you to have time with the Lord. And we usually have, we have kind of a variety of different resources for them. I have mm-hmm. some scripture copy notebooks for them. Um, we have a couple devotionals that that they have and I'll just say, Hey, you know, grab one of your devotionals and I want you to go spend some time with the Lord. And usually that's if I'm wrapping up my time and the boys are still sleepy. Mm -hmm. And so the girls are, you know, old enough to do that on their own. And then I'll usually, when they come back down, I'll say, Hey, like, talk to me about what you read about and and what you learned. And so we'll have that conversation together. Um, The other thing is scripture memory. And so we do a lot of that together. So there's things that they're memorizing, obviously, for church, you know, our church program, Adventure Club. And then there's passages that I'm memorizing apart from them. But I'll have them help me with that. You know, the girls will have the my either my notebook or whatever it is, and they give me the words and help me memorize it. So there's a lot of stuff like that that happens. And then during the school year, there are passages of scripture that we learn together. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, we're memorizing Genesis 1 together, and we lead the hand motions and stuff for that for our co-op. And so we work on that every Monday, and we talk about, you know, the, that passage. And it's so cool when you're memorizing Scripture because, like you said, Mom, it just really makes you think about it. And so, it's, you know, you think about why did God create the world the way that he did? Why did he, you know, divide, divide it? And why was there this darkness? And then the passage says that the spirit of God breathed, you know, into the darkness. And it's just all these cool pictures of the character of God. And there's so much to learn as you're doing that. So um, that's another aspect. And then the other aspect, you know, of Bible time that we do is, is family devotions. And so, you know, that's usually three to four nights a week. It's not every night because there's a couple mm-hmm. nights when grants out. And that happens for us around the kitchen table. And Grant just picks something. So mm-hmm. It's usually yeah. always different. And, you know, he had a book for a while by the table that was called, um, I think it was called Bible Models. But he would read, you know, a little devotional from there and we talk about it. Or sometimes he just opens his Bible and shares something. So He's pretty you know, great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, hold your thought because I wanted to throw this in because I remember when y'all lived in Louisville and, and I remember, I, I think you and I, or maybe you weren't, maybe you were out that evening or something. I don't remember that part. I just remember like being in your kitchen. I think I was either cleaning up or whatever. But Grant was having Bible time in the room with the girls. And I just remember it was like, you know, they were, they were shouting like, I think it was maybe the leper on the side of the road. I can't remember, but it was like, come out. I don't think it was Lazarus, but it was something like, oh, no, it was help me. And Grant was so <laughs> animated and the girls, I just remember thinking he's just so into this and they're not going to forget it, you know. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> that's one thing. Grant is such a storyteller, so no. he makes everything so interesting. <laughs> but I love that it doesn't have to be complicated. And right. That- that's really fun. I mean, we even had over the summer, Grant had a Bible joke book and trivia book Mm -hmm. that he was using, you know, a few times a night. And the kids loved that. They thought that was so much fun. Mm -hmm. So I think just if the word is a part of your family life, Mm -hmm. then it's gonna, you want it to be coming at you know, your kids and you and in a variety of ways. and It's a way of um, life. Yeah, it's a way of life like it talks about, you know, in Deuteronomy 6 mm-hmm. when, you, when you rise up and when you sit down, it's not, you know, a one size fits all the little check, you know, the check mm-hmm. mark box that we got through the Bible lesson today. Yeah. Uh, and I love seeing that with y'all. I love seeing that with Jordan and Maureen and their kids. I love seeing it with Jeremy and Kessie because I've witnessed all of y'all with the way of life, teaching your children the Bible and life lessons and pointing the kids back to what the scripture says and all of you helping your kids like memorize the word, the importance of the word. And it makes me think of, you know, one of the things I feel so blessed about is that all of y'all are on the same page in that realm, even so much so when you're talking about memorizing scripture, how together you and Maureen and Kessie got your kids on zoom and had them the girls learning psalm 139 and you know memorizing that together and working so hard on that i mean i still like sometimes just for my own encouragement (laughs) my own you know uh posterity or whatever i just go back and i just watch it you know whether it was when they performed it or i say perform i hate to use that word when they recited it at um at, at jameson and Marilyn's wedding reception but then when they did it um for me as a gift in christmas at christmas and um a couple years ago on you know i but i think Oh, that's like all it's a priority priority in all three of your families to learn to help your girls learn it and then to know that you may that you got not only work on it together in your own individual families, but that you saw that you did that together. I mean, that speaks volumes about where all of y'all are in terms of your priority of the word of God. Well, and that was encouraging to me. I mean, that was not even my idea. That, that I can't remember if it originated from Maureen or Kessa, but they both were like, hey, we're doing this. And that was awesome because, you know, Patrick was still little at that point. And so my girls were like, 
couldn't wait to get on their Zoom call to learn the next part. And <laughs> well, just because it was learning scripture, it wasn't like we're getting on the Zoom call just to chat it up with each other. Right. It was like, oh, I mean, right. yeah, I think about that sometimes. And then y'all sent me some of the pictures, screenshots from that. It's like, you have, y'all have no idea what that meant to me. Just as a grandmother, but even more important than what it will mean to those, to your girls, all of your girls, the rest of their lives in terms of what they remember, in terms of learning that together. And what yeah. a great, I think it's such a great gift because first, it's, it's very affordable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's, it, you know, if you give that gift to someone, mm. it, it blesses the person you're giving it to. It blesses the people who are sitting around hearing you give it. It mm-hmm. blesses the people that, you know, that are learning it. It blesses the person that's teaching it mm-hmm. because God's word doesn't return void. And so it is such a gift to be able to, you know, teach the word of God to our children. I mean, really, if you're a mom, you know, it's, it's a built in Mm -hmm. gift because Mm -hmm. you have, okay, like I've got to teach this. We're going to sit down and we're going to get down to it. And I think too, just Bible memory, I'll just say this in general, like, you know, Bible memory is hard. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> the older you, you get, know, the I, harder it is, too. <laughs> yeah, and I, I hear a lot of times I'm going to say, I just can't do it. It's just too hard. And I think it is really, it's hard, but it's not as hard as you think. Mm-hmm. And the, what I mean by that is, you know, yesterday, like driving home, because I'm working on a passage that I'm trying to memorize. And so I just worked on it on the drive home and I was able to make it a lot further than I thought I could by just putting my mind to it. And how awesome that on the drive home, I was able to meditate on those truths mm-hmm. and, you know, think about those things versus something else. And it just really encouraged my soul and got me through the dinner hour. And I was tired last night, got me through and something. It's just, you know, just a little plug for memory. And and I think Bible memory as well is something that is encouraging to do with other women and say, hey, I'm working on this passage. Will you do it with me? Yeah. And, you know, you saying that, it just makes me remember because it is hard. But, you know, it is. I mean, it's hard. But I think about sometimes I know in my own life when I've memorized script, long passages of scripture, like a whole book or the Sermon on the Mount or whatever. And God reminded me that I have God, the Holy Spirit, as my helper. He guides me Mm -hmm. into all truth. He's going to help me. And not to mention, God wants me to learn his word. So, you know, how First John says, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And he and it's according to his will that I learn his word. So do I think he will help me memorize it and hide it in my heart? Of course he will. And so sometimes we have not because we ask not. That It doesn't mean that it becomes easy. So I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's amazing how much, you know, we draw near to God. He draws near to us. And then we ask for his help. Please help me memorize this. Please help me remember this word. Please help me, you know, and God will help us. He runs to our aid to help us with those kinds of things because it is according to his will. And we can know that we'll have the requests that we ask of him when we pray according to his will. So he will help us in that. Just like anything that God wants us to do that we know is according to his will, then we ask him to help us because I'm not on my own. It's not like, oh, it's just up to me to memorize the word of God. No, God, the Holy Spirit is my helper, and he'll help me with that and um, and to remember that as well. But yeah, it is it is hard work. You know, it's kind of like, you know, it's a discipline. You know, it is a discipline to do it and to, to, to work on but it. But the so. great thing about it, too, is that it even if you don't get it word perfect, like let's <laughs> say you spent so much time working on it and you still don't get it exactly where you want it to be, mm-hmm. all of that investment you know, is worth it. Absolutely. And, and, and I've been thinking about that because I'm memorizing the first eight verses of, of Psalm 119. 119. And it yeah. says, you know, then I shall not be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. And mm-hmm. it's even attempting to memorize scripture, even let's just say you're just saying, I'm going to attempt it. I'm mm-hmm. going to try. Absolutely. It's like fixing your eyes on his commandments and the Bible promises, like you will not be put to shame. Yep. Yeah. You know, you're not going to be embarrassed. I know. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it, yeah, it's yeah, it's just so great. I mean, I know I tell the kids on Wednesday nights when I'm helping them memorize the Word of God, I always just say, you know, if you can get this, and of course, kids, are, you know, learn things so much more quickly than we do. The older we get, the harder it becomes, or so it seems. That's what people say, and I've experienced that. So yeah, but anyway, um, but I always tell them, you'll have this the rest of your life. And I sometimes tell myself this, I think, I'm getting the Word of God into them. And even if they wander away from God's commandments, they cannot wander away from the Word that's in His heart because it's in their hearts because it's there, because and His Word doesn't return void. And then one day, you know, God, God will use it. I think of some of the kids over the years, you know, that have learned Scripture, and I know they've wandered away from what they they learned in terms of choices that they're making. But I think, Lord, you know, they have it in their hearts. I pray for them. I'm just saying that's the value of the Word of God. So many things that we give our kids or that we think are so important, they'll fade. They're not like intrinsic, but the Word of God it's so important, and if you know, to get it into their hearts, there may come a time where they're not reading the Word of God. But if they've gotten the stuff that they learned when they were children, they can't get away from it. They can't because it's there, and God will work, and He'll use it because His Word is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword. So, anyway, that's another yeah, thing. And I love that you brought up just like the prayer of asking the Holy Spirit to, you know, make it come alive, help us because. I mean, that's such an important thing. It's not, I mean, when we talked about personal Bible time, I didn't mention this, but, you know, I typically always start my time in the Word and just pray and just ask the the Holy Spirit to, you know, illuminate His Word and make it live to me and make it come alive and, and show me what He wants to show me and show me my sin and show me, you know, God's glory. And so that's the type of prayer that God promises to hear i mean Mm -hmm. he wants he promises to hear you know the prayers that are according to his will and is it according to his will for us to know the word and know more of his character yes absolutely and so what an encouraging thing that we the bible isn't like you know a textbook that we're just trying to dig in to find the material it's it's actually a living book that we get to know the author and we have the holy spirit to help us on the journey of reading and growing in the word. And, and that is just makes it such an exciting thing. It's really exciting. I always think about John, um, you know, the, the middle chapters, like, you know, 14, 15, when um, Jesus is preparing his disciples because he's going to be crucified and he is talking to them about the Holy Spirit that will come, another one just like himself. And one of the things he tells the disciples is that he is going to bring to their remembrance all that he said to them. And I think mm-hmm. about that because they didn't have, you know, the can- completed canon of scripture then, but they would be the ones writing it. You know, they were, would be writing, even writing that God brought to their mind what Jesus said to them when he was getting ready to be crucified. And they wrote it down because God, the Holy Spirit, brought to their minds all that he said to them. And I think about that, like the application is is different for us because we live in the church. I mean, it's the same for us, but different in the sense that we live in the church age. And when we come to faith in Christ, when God saves us, God, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. And God, Jesus was promising them that the Holy Spirit was coming. But anyway, the point being is like, All the scripture that we learn, that we have hidden in our hearts, God the Holy Spirit is free to bring that to our remembrance and remind us of it as we go throughout our day. So the more time that we don't waste, that we spend in the Word of God when we can, then it's a a deeper reservoir for the Holy Spirit to draw from as we go about life and as we need His Word and Him having the freedom to bring to our minds the things that, that we've hidden there. So that's just another reminder about how important the Word of God is and making the you time know, for it. Yeah, and one last thing I'll say as, as we wrap up, because okay. this just made me think about it when you said, like, spending the time and making the time for it, because this is just sort of, you know, a practical thing for me. But, you know, I always think about, you know, Mary and Martha and, mm-hmm. and Jesus saying, you know, Mary, you've chosen the good part. And so often, sometimes when I'm getting started on my day, I start to tell myself, 
you know, I don't have time to sit here. And again, some days I don't. I, I literally, right. there are needs that need to be cared for. And, and that, that would be unspiritual of me to sit there and, <laughs> and, and allow, you Not know, do the task people. of the day. <laughs> right, right. But I think more than often, I do have, and I'll think, I've got, I have 15 minutes. Like, I'm going to make the most of this 15 minutes. I'm just going to sit here, and I actually do have time to, you know, hit two more chapters. And so I'm going to sit here and do that. And, and that just kind of practice of just reminding myself that this is the most important mm-hmm. part of my day in terms of what I'm going to do today of making that priority has been just really helpful for me um, and something that I remind myself of often, just Jesus's, you know, words to Mary of, you know, this part that you're doing right now, this, this is not going to be taken away from you. It's right. eternal. Right. And, and he's going to use it, you know, and then we become like that kernel or whatever time we did have. Then it becomes like the, um, we can be like the cow chewing the cud, you know, the, <laughs> just <laughs> to use kind of a gross illustration. But still, you know, look it up, ladies, if you're not familiar with chewing the cud. But, um, but yeah, of, of, of keep going over the same thing that whatever you had time for is like, that's going to mull over my head all day today in different ways. Because isn't that the truth of scripture? Sometimes Grace Anna is like, oh, I saw it in this light here, but now I see it in this light. And now I see it in this light. You know, it's the same truth, but the way God illumines it at different times for different you know, different things d- throughout our lives or days or however. So, yeah, I love, I love that you, I love what you just said, you know, like, oh, I don't have time to sit here and have an hour long quiet time, but I have 10 minutes. So, mm-hmm. how am I going to spend the 10 minutes or whatever it is? So, that's, yeah. that's great. Well, anything else you want to throw in there before we close out about, um, encouragement for anybody who's maybe having trouble you know and let me say this the enemy will always want to keep you away from the word of god any mm-hmm. of us you know mm-hmm. there's always going to be a reason oh i can't do that but anything last last encouragement before we close out the broadcast no i i think just yeah that that's a great place to end of let's make it difficult for the enemy to to keep us from the word let's mm-hmm. you know commit that we're not going to let the little things keep us yeah. but you know it, it lets be women who, you know, make it hard mm-hmm. for Satan to, to keep us out. To of distract us. You know, us. <laughs> dad wrote that, you know, when he gave us all of our Bibles as kids, he wrote, you know, this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. Right. So let's just resolve as, as best we can that, that nothing's going to keep us from that from the book. Well, Father, thank you for this podcast today for all the women who are listening, will be listening. Um, And we uh, are so grateful that we have Bibles in our hands, that we can have as many Bibles as we want. We can have them in every room in our house. And not only that, we can have them to listen to through technology. I pray that would be women who would take that seriously and who would be women who love to read our Bibles and have it read to us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed this episode of Rare But Real, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when a new episode is posted. And share this podcast with friends. Follow Audrey on Instagram and Facebook at Mothering From The Heart. And listen to all her messages on the Search the Scriptures app.